Hi, I'm Don McCann of Structural Energetic Therapy here at the New England Regional Conference. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about the workshop I'm going to be presenting about tools for treating scoliosis. We have some very special, unique ways of doing it with structural energetic therapy, of treating it. And specifically, we start with a combination of three things. The first is a cranial structural therapy, core distortion release. We have found there's a twist in the body that everybody starts with, and the people that have scoliosis, this twist is much greater, much more significant. The twist has the iliums rotating and has the sacrum tipping, which creates an, ex an extreme curvature of the spine. What also goes with that is a long leg, short leg because when an ilium rotates, it's pressing the leg, the acetabulum, down on the side it's rotating forward or down on the side it's rotating back. So we get a long and short leg from that. So when we looked at that, we started seeing that if we're just working with the spine, we still have this other condition and we're gonna get limited results. So cranial structural work works to go ahead and bring the sacrum and ilium back out of rotation and into weight-bearing support, all the way down to the feet and all the way up to the top of the head. What happens when we bring the iliums back into support and the sacrum more level is the exaggerated curvatures of the spine automatically become less, and they're supported. Where if we just work with just the spine we, and the person stood up, they still wouldn't have the support of the spine. They'd very likely go back to the way they started very quickly. Once we've started with the cranial structural work, the body's wanting to unwind and let go of the old holding patterns, the distortion patterns that are part of the scoliosis. We then apply very specific deep tissue myofascial therapies to the tissues that have been chronically tightened, chronically shortened, and oftentimes adhered together. So we're working those out so they can release further in the soft tissue the problems that have developed from the scoliosis. We all know that soft tissue governs the organization of the bones and the structure of the body. But by working with the cranial and the soft tissue, we have two ways to really make a big difference. Another very important part of working with the soft tissue is that we want to be able to work deeply, but we don't want it to be extremely painful for the client. The scoliosis patient has some very tightened tissue compensating for the exaggerated curvatures. So we use more of a three-step approach to get into the deep tissue. The first one is a spreading or opening or unwinding to release the ischemia, the trigger points, the compensations for what's going on at the deeper level. The second one is a directed myofascial unwinding to get the right tissues to release in the way that the body needs to let go to stand up straighter. The third is we go back into those chronically tightened areas where the muscles become glued together, the fascias become adhered, and we separate, stretch, and reorganize these tissues. But by working the three layers at one time, one after the other, we can work deeply and be tolerable for a client to get substantial change. The final part we always involve in this and has always come up is there is energy changes in the body. Some of the energy changes are the chronically tightened muscles have become and blocked off energy flows in the body so when we open those up the energy can flow again. Others are the fact that when the body's in distortion, more than 15 degree rotation or imbalance at any joint, the muscles around that joint can't work properly. So we're working to bring the muscles and the, the, the rotation out of the body and we get less than 15%, muscles start engaging and becoming strong where they were weak before. The third part is the chronically tightened muscles in the body block off the expression of emotion. And the body gets invested in keeping that emotion contained. So we create space for that energy to flow through. It may come through as vibration. It may come through as recognizable emotion. It may come through as heat. But regardless, we create the energy for that to release so that when the body is released, there's no reason for it to go back. It's no longer having to contain or block that emotion. And the energy flows in the body are connecting and working to support the body. So that's our three-step approach I'm going to be talking about in the workshop I'm going to be teaching tomorrow. And I just thought it would be very nice to tell you about it in advance. Thank you very much.